Um, and actually, I have seen some companies, it's not come mainstream yet, but there are actually some companies providing what are described as like extracurricular tutors. So what they are is they're not tutors to support a student with English or maths or science or history. They're tutors who are supporting learners to develop their debating skills. Or, I mean, we already have music tutors, quite a few people may have music tutors, but actually it's about people who are there to develop your personal transferable skills. And actually, I feel that that is a massive part of tutoring, which isn't spoken about enough. So it's about really creating an environment where students feel comfortable to make mistakes, try things out, and where they also believe in their own ability to do that. Tutoring, you know, it can take someone from point A to point B, and potentially you may not go in a straight path, there may be a bit of a wiggle, you may go backwards, you may go sideways, you know, wherever you go, it doesn't matter because you'll get to, you know, a more positive path. So yeah, lockdowns put tutoring on the map, but I still say there is work to do to do more to project the benefits of tutoring. Hello and welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast, the podcast that brings you the latest in the world of tutoring, edtech and education, and hopefully inspires in you the big change that each and every one of us is capable of. Qualified Tutor is an industry-leading tutor training organisation and online tutoring community for thousands of tutors around the world. This podcast is the voice of this community, where we aim to hear from tutors, teachers, entrepreneurs, coaches, business experts, students, tutorpreneurs, and more from the world of tutoring about what inspires them every day, how they can help tutors like you, and what they've learnt about tutoring along the way. The question is, what will you learn today? Welcome to the next episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast, and welcome today to Daniel Dipper. Welcome, Daniel. How, how, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. You? I'm very well, thanks, Daniel. Um, Daniel is, first and foremost, a very valued member of the Qualified Tutor community and an amazing spokesperson for tutors, educators, and many of the underserved and underprivileged across across the education sector. As a little introduction to the the vast array of things that, that Daniel uh, takes part in um, and contributes to. He is currently a, a, a history and politics undergraduate at Magdalen College, uh, Oxford. He was Daniel was a, a lighting tutor for two years and has since launched Get to University, which is an access project that Daniel devised to support Year Twelve students who are looking to apply to, to to university in the coming year. Daniel is also a potential Plus UK. Uh, trustee and we might hear a little bit more about that in Daniel's responses today and has written blogs for just about every educational organization in the UK it seems including Potential Plus, the Sutton Trust and of course us here at Qualified Tutor. Daniel has a very bright future ahead of him and a pretty glittering past as well Um, and I can't really wait for this podcast episode to become the recording that QT can point to in, in, in 20 years time and say hey look we had Daniel on our podcast way back in 2021. So, um, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are right on the eve of, of, of returning for your second year at Oxford. Thoughts and feelings? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be good to, to get back, particularly now that things will be opening a bit more, so there's a lot more social opportunities, but actually there'll be a lot more face-to-face contact as well, hopefully with tutors, so it should be a really positive experience. Yeah, and things perhaps looking a little more positive on that side in terms of social socialising and returning to in-person seminars and tutorials than this time last year. So that's a good thing. Um, and I think that it would be good to to, to, to get right in, to start here, um, because yep. there's so much that we want to hear from you. Um, so that, that first question, Daniel, is, is the one that we always start with. What is your why as a tutor, Daniel? Yes, it's a really great question. So I think I'm going to answer it using two stories of kind of different perspectives on tutoring. So my first experience in tutoring, which you spoke about, was the lighting. 
tutoring that I was doing. So it was with a, a live events organization called Young Technicians, who are based where I was. Um, and basically kind of just naturally happened, so to speak. So I, I joined the scheme in 2016 when it was starting up. And I was a student and I was learning from other students. And I got really interested in the lighting. So I kind of in my own time, I was exploring the lighting. I was watching like tutorial videos online, reading the manuals, experimenting with the software. And I was starting to really develop my skills outside of the classroom. So I was using what they kind of equipped me with, the basics, and then I was using that, developing my own shows and practicing from there. So when I got to the end of my GCSE, some of the other people who'd been tutoring at that organization, they moved on. And I was asked if I was happy to step up and do that. So it was kind of there. It was just a natural progression in terms of I'd learned quite a lot in the classroom and from my own experiences. So it was really an opportunity for me to share that with other people and to develop my skills in a different area. So that was kind of my first experience of tutoring. So it wasn't really a deliberate, I set out to achieve that. It was more, it just happened. And it was a new way of kind of challenging myself, stretching my skills and actually trying to convert all the things I had in my head. How do I get that and communicate that to students who are aged from 11 to 18? How do I make sure it's digestible for people who may never have seen this before? And then the, the second experience, which I'd say is having more of an impact now, is I was supported by an organisation called Axis Oxbridge, who are now called Zero Gravity. And basically, I was applying to Oxford. No one from my school ever applied to Oxford. A few had applied to Cambridge, but they never, as I say, looked at Oxford. Um, and I wasn't massively sure on the application process. I mean, the university website, I think, is quite helpful. But it's not the same as actually having that experience, being able to talk to somebody who's done it done it themselves, has gone through that process and then has actually gone on to study at Oxford. So that platform connected me with an undergraduate studying history and politics at a college in Oxford. And through one hour a week of video mentoring, they were supporting me with my applications. By the time I got it, I already submitted my personal statement, but they were really, really helpful for preparing for the history missions test I had to do. And I think as well, it kind of really exemplified some of the positives of tutoring because instead of them following their set plan, of in week one we should cover this because they had a typical plan of like session one you should cover this session two whatever they really adapted it to my needs because i'd already done the personal statement so they started straight on the history missions test i already started exploring that so instead of telling me things that i already knew what they did was they walked through an example with me i then go my, away in my own time i do some practice they give me some feedback i then do another one in my own time and they give more feedback and the sessions were more about them just conveying that feedback, giving me an opportunity to ask questions instead of them basically telling me how to do things that I was already doing. So that was really, really helpful. And then they also helped me with some interview practice. And I think that potentially I would have got in anyway, but actually that, that process was so beneficial because it was, it was reassuring as well to hear from somebody who'd done that and was saying, I think you're doing quite well. This is really good. You can work on this as well. And I think as well, the process generally was beneficial for my subjects as well having to engage critically with historical sources is part of the A-level curriculum. So I think that that was really beneficial to get that one-to-one -one contact time as well, that one hour a week with someone who was studying that subject that I wanted to be. So that was kind of the second experience. And I think really the tutoring that I've been doing since has really had that social impact sort of perspective because I was helped by them. Now I'm trying to do what I can to help other people get where I have if they want to do that. So um, I'm actually at a moment a zero gravity mentor. So I've now kind of flipped. I've gone to the other side now and I'm actually supporting a student apply for history and politics at Oxford. And as you were saying as well, admittedly, I've kind of paused getting to university for the moment, but I set up that particular thing in May 2020 because I had quite good rapport with some of the students in the year below me. And those beginning to look at university applications. They really weren't sure. They, they didn't know basically anything they were saying to me what is a personal statement and I was like hang on like we really need to start from square one here and really kind of spell out all of the stages and potentially particularly with lockdowns and with the fact that teaching was online and a lot of the work that's been provided to them which is worksheets it was like I think it'd actually be really beneficial for me to find a small almost like seminars really to go through okay, this is how, this is some things you want to consider when applying for university. This is how I'd go about putting together a personal statement. So I ran a few kind of larger group sessions where there's about 10 or 15 students and actually they're available on the Get to University YouTube channel. I've left them up as a resource for people to refer to about some of the admissions assessment as well and, and also, as I say, about personal statements. And then the other part, which isn't kind of online, was um, 
working with some of the individual students, providing some tailored feedback on their personal statements. So I was looking at tons of drafts. They send a draft to me and then I send one back with most probably more pages of feedback than what they sent me to begin with in terms of the actual content. So, so yeah, that's kind of some of the social impact stuff I've put out to do because I think it's really powerful really being able to transform their prospects and support other people to basically do what I've been able to do. Yeah. So, so you mentioned, talked a little bit there about the power kind of, of tutoring and, and how that you were able to be supported by a mentor who was able to tailor the program to, to your needs and not just deliver a kind of structured, prearranged um, course, as it were, or kind of curriculum, a mini curriculum. So w- what is it that, that you think tutoring can achieve? What, what, is, what is the power, do you think, of tutoring? Yeah, so I think, again, I'll kind of use an example and then hopefully expand from there. So when I was doing the, the lighting tutoring, it's rather different to kind of a classroom about, you're not preparing someone to sit an exam or a test, you're preparing someone to do that job in real life. So what I was doing was teaching them how to use the software, how they needed to troubleshoot in real time and try and do some of that simulation. But actually, a lot of the learning as well was being with them on real world festivals. Some of these festivals, we had like 35,000 people coming to visit over the course of a weekend. And it was working with them in that high pressure situation to support them with troubleshooting and running the show, making it as smooth as possible. So in terms of that, it was about taking a student who potentially in September when they joined had never really thought about lighting before. They didn't know any of the terminology. They didn't know how to do anything. And hopefully by the July of that next year, them being able to run a lighting show on their own or with minimal support and really feeling confident and comfortable to do that. So I think that that's a, a real example of where kind of the stakes are quite high and what they're able to achieve is, is quite large because... Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big thing. You're, you're not just teaching students how to do maths equations or whatever, which, while they're important, you know, this was really challenging stuff sometimes, running with hundreds of lights with, like, £20,000 worth of equipment. Um, so I'd say that tutoring, I think, though, actually, with some of that tutoring, though, it wasn't just actually giving them, you know, this is how to do this, this is how to do this. It was actually making them feel comfortable about this is how to do this. And I think actually in the, the Qualified Tutor course covers this as well. It's about the, the trust leap in the sense that students need to feel comfortable to be able to make those decisions or do those things, particularly, as I say, when the stakes are so high. So it's about really creating an environment where students feel comfortable to make mistakes, try things out, and where they also believe in their own ability to do that. So I think that actually a massive part of tutoring, particularly when you first meet a student, isn't actually about okay, we need to write this essay, analyse this historical source. It's more about getting the student comfortable to do that and be able to perform at their best because, you know, you can teach them a lot, but actually if they're not comfortable, they're not going to be able to achieve their potential and they're not going to be able to replicate it when you're there. So I think that, as I say, the first stage is really the, the confidence aspect. And in terms of what they can achieve, I mean, as I say, I've managed to go to Oxford and I feel that the support I was provided was Know, massively beneficial and supportive of that so I think that tutoring can achieve a lot and I think that actually if I kind of touch on potential plus UK I should say of course I'm speaking in a personal capacity here I'm not speaking on behalf of them but I think that for the students that that charity particularly support so it's students who would be described as high learning potential so it's students who really could achieve a lot academically but all, not always in the classroom where their needs tailored to because these are the students who will most probably, quite a few of them will be, you know, going through the worksheet at 90 miles an hour. They'll be getting 90, 100% of it right. And actually the, you know, the typical classwork that may be set of them may not always be enough of a challenge. So actually what tutoring could potentially achieve there is it would be about stretching them beyond their comfort zone into a growth zone. And it would actually be, really you know responding to their needs and making sure that they're being adequately challenged so I think that that's just another example where tutoring can achieve a lot because actually I feel that some students who are highlighting potential they may disengage from the classroom because they go to the classroom and they're not being challenged they're just being given things which just really are not reflective of their capability so actually tutoring is a good way and it's also good for other students who may have 
I've had, I was listening to Jack Simmons' episode a few weeks ago, tutoring there could be really helpful for students with dyslexia or who may have kind of almost been written off because they're not kind of fit in a typical mould, but actually tutoring re-engages them with learning and creates that environment. Again, I think the environment's so important. It creates that environment where they're comfortable to really achieve their best and try things out because you're only going to learn from getting things wrong. Absolutely. That, that's such a, a key kind of essential baseline element, isn't it, to, to helping students grow and improve and also understand themselves a little bit more because mm. we so often, we're so terrified of mistakes and normally, yep. and even now as, as adults, we're terrified of mistakes, but, you know, children are perhaps even, even more scared because they're not sure, what, you know, of the kind of level of punishment or whatever that they're going to receive for that. So letting them know that, that mistakes are very much part of, of success is, is yep. key. And actually on that, that very same note, you, you touched a little bit there on, on disadvantaged students or students who perhaps are struggling in the classroom. How do you think, tutoring specifically can help to reduce a little bit of the the educational disadvantage both in this country and 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 abroad yeah so i think tutoring can play a massive role because i mean all teachers will absolutely try their best but they may have you know 10 20 30 pupils in front of them so they're going to try and pitch to bring in as many of those students as possible and try and you know they'll try and find a point where there's there's some continuity between all the different students or they'll stick to a curriculum because they need to cover this amount of content to prepare them for exam. Whereas with, with a tutor, they can meet you where you are, which is really, really important. So with lockdown um, and the impact of that and online learning, you know, of course, we've had some students who didn't have access to the internet or to online learning at all. Some schools were not in a position to be able to provide uh, a full range of online learning. And actually, there's only providing one or two worksheets a day or they weren't having that contact time. And also, even in the classroom, you know, student, uh, teachers sometimes will, will stop with a student for a few minutes and they'll work through a problem with them. But actually online, I mean, that can happen in you know, a one-to-one environment, but that's much more challenging when you've got a class of 20 on teams or whatever. So I think in terms of educational disadvantage, I think tutoring can play a really big role because a tutor really has that time because of that small group teaching to really identify where there needs to be more work and where there needs to be improvement. So they can, yeah, potentially use assessments, but actually assessments can be quite intimidating, particularly as I get the understanding quite a few students have kind of been tested to death at the start of the academic year with them returning to school. So actually tutors can use more informal methods to inquire to the student, okay, where do you think people work on? Or they can just observe the student and how they're working and identify these areas of improvement. So I think tutoring can play a massive role in educational disadvantage. And we've seen the National Tutoring Programme, of course, which the Sutton Trust and the EEF and other organisations were involved in the creation of. Um, so that kind of has put tutoring on the map and showing that actually tutoring could be a way of closing this. Though, of course, if they're being taken out of the school day from other subjects, then potentially the impact of tutoring, because they're losing some of the other parts of the curriculum, the impact of tutoring may not be as large. So I think that tutoring could be really, really important. Because I mean, you know, I'm not saying get to university was amazing or, or perfect, but what it delivered was it took students in May 2020 from, we don't know what a personal statement is, what's a conditional offer, how do I write a personal statement, to by August or September, all of these students had a, what, I, what I class as a good draft of a personal statement. And all it needed was a bit more fine tuning of teacher feedback and, and they were ready to go. So I think that tutoring, you know, it can take someone from point A to point B and potentially you may not go in a straight path. There may be a bit of a wiggle. You may go backwards. You may go sideways. You know, wherever you go, it doesn't matter because you'll get to, you know, a more positive path. And actually going back to the educational disadvantage with lockdown and less of that personal contact, I think that, again, it's just about opening students up to learning, showing it can be fun. It's not just sat in front of Zoom for two, three hours a day or however long it was or just receiving worksheets over Zoom, actually, we can play games, we can talk things through, we can have debates, we can have discussions and actually really tailoring that learning to students hopefully will unlock them because as well, some students have had a really tough time, you know, being socially isolated or whatever else they may have experienced. So it's about overcoming those as well, those feelings the students may have. And tutoring, as I say, it can do that because of creating that really good positive learning environment.
To join the growing number of qualified tutors, enroll now for the Level 3 Qualification for Tutors. This eight-week online facilitated course covers the roles and responsibilities involved in teaching and learning, with a particular focus on inclusion, assessment and feedback. Upon completion, you'll be awarded a Level 3 in Education and Training from Ofqual recognised training provider Highfield Qualifications. You will also gain a Qualified Tutor Quality Mark, the independent quality mark for tutors. Whatever your starting point, a qualification for tutors has to be the next step. Enroll today at qualifiedtutor.org forward slash training. And you've very much been at the forefront, Daniel, of the tutoring sphere as it's developed over the past 12, 18 months. How would you say that your attitude kind of towards tutoring about tutoring have changed what what have you seen uh, the developments and and what impact do you think that's going to have on on students yeah so i think tutoring has firstly become a bit more on the map with the national tutoring program it's almost like the government has recognized it exists and that in itself is quite important because i feel previously i feel previously and potentially i had this preconceived view as well tutoring was kind of seen as a thing that people who want to get into a grammar school you know with like the 11 plus sort of exam or people who are potentially at private school who need further support, well, that's what they do. They'll pay for a tutor. Um, but it wasn't really seen as something that people like me would use. We wouldn't use a tutor. What well, you know, that's that's not really something we could afford. And yeah, I don't know, there was almost, I wouldn't say class is the right word, but there was some sort of cultural barrier that also having a tutor seemed odd. Whereas I feel like now the fact that lots of students should have had a tutor through the National Tutoring Programme. And actually, there's been lots of initiative initiatives out there, not just Zero Gravity, which is providing free mentoring, but there's other platforms which have been providing free tutoring. I can't think of any, but there are definitely a lot out there because I've seen them on my social media feeds. So just the fact that it's become free, I think, is actually a massive step as well because it's it's kind of getting over that divide and it's showing that anybody can benefit from that personalised support. So I think that, yeah, definitely tutoring is a lot more on the map, I think that it certainly has a larger role to play. And it'll be interesting to see the National Tutoring Programme, is this a long-term extra support arm that we're going to have? We don't just have teaching assistants working with students in the classroom, but actually we have a, a bank of tutors, potentially local tutors even, who can work with individual schools to ensure that all their students are fulfilling their potential. So, so yeah, I'd say that... Um, Lockdowns put tutoring on the map, but I still say there is work to do to do more to project the benefits of tutoring. Because I mean, I went to quite a few meetings over lockdown, a few discussion events about tutoring, and there were still people saying, oh, tutoring is just a corrupt industry because all it's about is just making money out of people who want their children to do well in tests. And it's like, well, tutoring isn't just that. As I've been saying with the lighting aspect of things, what actually I think was the most beneficial part of them participating in that activity. I don't actually think it was the fact they knew how to do lighting or whatever. It's cool. They may even want a career in it. But actually, I think the most important thing was, you know, giving those students the confidence to do those things, particularly such the large scale, and for them to be able to talk about the transferable skills that they've developed as well. Because I think that one thing as well is in our society, I believe, we've kind of got education is one sort of stack of skills and then we kind of put work, business, everything else. That that's kind of a different set of skills. But actually, we need the same skills. Really, I feel that an independent learner in the classroom has the necessary skills to be a great business person. Because an independent learner, they can manage their time quite well, which therefore means that they can ensure to meet their client deadlines. Uh, an independent learner, if they don't know something, they can look into it. So that means that if they're trying to see about how they can develop their business or if they need to learn more about something their clients asked about, again, they're well equipped to do that. And actually, I wrote a blog, which is on the Qualified Tutor website, about independent learning and my my live topic review, which was part of the Level 3 qualification. Also, I was really trying to say with independent learners, it's not just about setting these students up for university, but actually, if these students are not interested in university at all, which there's a vast, vast number of students, and I think that at the moment, our system kind of pushes those students still to go to university, but actually we really need those strong vocational roots and also not see vocational something worse because actually, you know, plumbers can earn quite a lot of money 
it's not some sort of profession that should be locked down upon. And actually, they have to be highly skilled to do that role. They have to know about all the intricacies. They need to be really well equipped to do problem solving, manage their own taxes. These are all things that we should be really setting learners up for success. So I think that actually tutors shouldn't just be seen as something for, I want to go to a top university or whatever, but actually personal development tutors can be beneficial, I think, in, in everything. Um, and actually, I have seen some companies, it's not become mainstream yet, but there are actually some companies providing what are described as like extracurricular tutors. So what they are is they're not tutors to support a student with English or maths or science or history. They're tutors who are supporting learners to develop their debating skills. Or, I mean, we already have music tutors, quite a few people may have music tutors, but actually it's about people who are there to develop your personal transferable skills. And actually, I feel that that is a massive part of tutoring, which isn't spoken about enough. It's not an exam factory. It's actually about getting students really ready to engage with learning and set them up for whatever they want to do next in life. And as I say, I feel personally a tutor can be massively beneficial for to be a plumber, for giving those skills to be an independent business person. What a good vision for the future. We have kind of individual tutors for, you know, plumbing or for for you know hairdressing or for these wonderful vocational courses that provide an alternative to as you say this kind of societal pressure to go and do you know some academic degree at, at a university i suppose we have it already though don't we apprenticeships they're, they're a massive way that's almost a form of tutoring because you're putting them in that learning environment in a workplace and they're getting that opportunity to work usually in small teams and learn the skills on the job. And actually, I'm a massive supporter of apprenticeships. And I think that particularly degree apprenticeships, where you combine both the educational and the practical element where you can apply that learning, I think that actually, you know, that in a way is a form of learning, it's a form of tutoring, it's a form of education. So really acknowledging the power of that as well. Yeah. So so just to finish then, Daniel, because you're already providing that little vision of the future. And, and I think... A greater synergy between non-standard academic subjects and tutoring could be uh, a very good way for tutoring to become more diverse and more uh, kind of complete as a as a sector as an industry. What would success for you look like for tutoring by twenty thirty? I think success is where really people, general people, including the students, really see the value of tutoring. As I say, it's not just seen as a short-term solution, because I think quite a few people um, may see it as, okay, the 11 plus is coming up, GCSEs are coming up, it's March or April, so let's just get a tutor in for the last few months to do that final preparation. But actually having the tutors at the start, laying the groundwork, is actually really, really important, I think. So I definitely say bringing tutors in really early in that process and also it not just being seen as, as I say, just that exam route. We just need them to finish this exam, but actually it can be a great way of engaging in independent learning because particularly with the top universities, they're going to be looking for students who are really interested in their subject and actually having someone who not doing the work for them, that's not what a tutor's about. The tutor's about enabling that student to do the work for themselves and giving them the skills to do that. So having that tutor to talk about that history subject you find very interesting, making wider recommendations of things that you can engage in like lectures or, or certain books or those sort of things actually can be really, really beneficial. So I think definitely maybe expanding the scope of what people think tutoring is about. Um, standards, of course, qualified tutor is about having that quality mark. So you've engaged in a learning process and actually you're committed to professional development by being part of the community. So really rolling out having those standards, because I think some people may view tutoring as less because it's far less regulated. Of course, we need to follow the best practice for safeguarding and child protection, which all tutors will ensure to do. But actually regulating it, ensuring that there are some standards in place there as well, will hopefully kind of see that parity of esteem between a tutor and a teacher. I know that Julia, who founded Qualified Tutor, is kind of saying tutoring is not plan B as a job. And actually, I think really underlining that to people as well, seeing it as a career, because I don't think there's that many people who see it as a career. And I think kind of the other thing is, as I say, about bridging those gaps, it not just being a paid service, 
because, of course, I understand tutors will need a way to live on, of course, but actually it's about these voluntary organisations which are connecting university undergraduates with students, then sort of really beneficial interventions, which can only be like an hour of your time a week, really roll, rolling them out much more widely. So I know that, of course, again, I'm not speaking for Zero Gravity, but Zero Gravity is certainly planning to expand a lot and have a much larger cohort. So it's about, um, yeah, just keep expanding, expanding the reach of tutoring so that as many students can benefit as possible. And also, hopefully, um, the government really recognising the role tutors can play. Because as I say, we've got the, the national tutoring programme currently, but it's about, OK, what's happening in the longer term? Are we just going back to normal in quotation marks? And actually, I would say, no, we shouldn't just be going back to normal. We should be reflecting on what we've learned over the last 18 months and seeing what interventions actually work. Because before 2020, you know, the 2019 figures for the disparity between the lowest socioeconomic backgrounds, the highest socioeconomic backgrounds in terms of kind of their educational outlook and in terms of what they achieve, there's about an 18 month gap between them. And that's from some of the Sutton Trust research to reference that, as well as some of the other organisations in the education space. So there was already this disparity before we got to coronavirus. So it's really about putting in place interventions to ensure that we close that gap. It's not just about dealing with the effects of coronavirus is about dealing with the effects of everything else and actually hopefully getting it that we really do live in a country where it doesn't matter what your background is where you're born and actually the outcomes you get are the same it's about how much work you put in so so yeah hopefully that's a few kind of ideas of different ways that tutoring can go in the next 10 years and hopefully keep putting it on the map and really showing the benefits of tutoring there's so much in there daniel um Thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to explain kind of all of the work you do and have done over the past few years. Um, it's really a very, very impressive set of skills that you have and, and, and um, the kind of contributions you make to the education sphere, to the tutoring sphere, to the lighting sphere, to the qualified tutor community, to our courses, and obviously all of the, the various projects that you are involved in. Just quickly, what is the best way that someone listening to this now can can get in touch with you if they uh, most probably linkedin i would actually just if it's okay just add another thing i didn't mention which i think would be really good to show another way that i'd say tutoring is kind of filtering into the more general sort of discourse as such in the space which is at my college they've just launched a post offer holder mentoring scheme so what it does is it connects undergraduates with students who are in target areas for the college in terms of outreach. They really want to increase the number of students applying from those areas. And basically, it's for those who they have their interview and they've received an offer from Maudlin. And basically, the scheme is they get a one-hour mentoring session after they've received their offer to talk through their options for the student to ask questions about what it's like to study at Maudlin, the academic demands. Um, and also, then they're offered a, a later session um, when they're actually coming to Maudlin to talk about, you know, the practicalities, what should we be packing? And it's to really, again, reassure those concerns and make them feel really comfortable. And actually, some of the conversations have been amazing. Um, the blogs that I wrote for the Oxford History faculty, which a qualified tutor also published about the essay writing process, they actually, the idea for that, them blogs came from those conversations because I was looking at what questions are all these students asking me about how do I go about writing an essay? So. I use their questions and I have them in my head when I was writing that blog. So I'd say that that's another way that tutoring, I feel, has been really beneficial because it's a form of, you know, mentoring, I suppose, is a form of tutoring. Of course, mentoring suggests much more, I'd say, an equal relationship, which is really what a tutor should be going for. It shouldn't be a tutor talking at a student. It should be two people working together to fulfil educational goals. So that scheme, as I say, while I don't think it's going to massively transform their degree in terms of, know how well they're doing their degree it'll ensure that the students feel more comfortable when they're settling in they'll know someone who they can talk to while they're at the university so that's just another way where i think that was a really beneficial intervention wonderful well thank you so much daniel um best of luck with the coming term ahead um and if you'd like to stay in touch as daniel said you can find out more on his linkedin profile or you can contact him in the qt community so one final time, Daniel. Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll speak again soon. Thank you. Cheers, Daniel.
thank you for listening to this episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast. Whether you're a regular listener of this podcast or you've just stumbled across it, join the Qualified Tutor Podcast group within the Qualified Tutor community to stay up to date with our latest news, offers, workshops, and of course, simply to meet other tutors like you. Whatever your level as a tutor, our training courses will be the next step in your professional development. Visit qualifiedtutor.org slash training to find out more about our CPD accredited and Ofqual recognised courses, the first of their kind in the tutoring industry. Your student deserves the best tutor possible. Make that happen today by joining Qualified Tutor.